clastic sedimentary rocks are made of broken pieces of pre-existing rock. So when we take a clastic sedimentary rock and look at it, we will actually be able to see the pieces or grains that are making it up come from other rocks that were already on the planet. Those rocks were broken up over time and then reconfigured into the rock that we're holding in our hands. The first and one of the most important properties to look at when analyzing clastic sedimentary rocks is grain size. For our purposes, we're only going to identify three different sizes. In reality, in geology, there are actually several different sizes. Uh, but again, at the introductory level, we're going to simplify it to these three. The largest grain size that we will look at is gravel, ranging from 0.2 to 6.4 centimeters in size. The middle size is sand, ranging from 0.006 to 0.2 centimeters in size. And the smallest is mud, looking at particles or grains that are less than 0.006 centimeters in size. So when we look at a rock like this one, we can see large grains in it. Those right away we know are gravel. They stand out. They're easy to see to the naked eye. When we look at a rock that's comprised mainly of sand, which is our middle size for our classification scheme, you can see that the grains don't readily stand out as did the gravels. Here, if I hold up a magnifying glass and we look at the rock closer up, you can actually see the individual grains as different colors in the rock. And then if you're holding it in your hand, you can feel the sand grains, just like sandpaper made out of sand-sized grains, you can feel the grittiness, you can feel the individual grains in the rock with your finger. For the smallest size, mud, when you rub your finger across it, it feels very smooth. You don't feel any individual grains. It feels like one smooth, continuous mass. In reality, there are actually two different grain sizes in our mud category. One is called silt, which is the larger of the two, and the other is called mud. So how can you tell the difference when looking at a rock that contains just mud? You actually do, on, or in your body, have something that's sensitive enough to tell the difference between silt and mud. So what I'm going to do is break up the mud-bearing rock a little farther and take a piece of it which you can see is an actual rock. And what you do is put it in your mouth and chew it up. And when you've gotten it broken down, back to the individual pieces again, you take it on your tongue and lick your teeth. Now, this sounds disgusting, but what you're actually doing, your tongue is sensitive enough to feel silt grains. So if the rock contains silt, you will feel it as grittiness between your tongue and your teeth. If it was all clay, it would be smooth like creamy toothpaste. It would just be a nice smooth texture across your teeth. This rock, I can tell you that I've used in the video, contains silt. I can feel the grittiness between my tongue and teeth. The second clastic rock property that we are going to look at and identify is sorting. When we're looking at sorting, we're looking at the distribution of grain sizes within the individual rock. So if a rock is classified as well sorted, we are looking at the class or grains in that rock all being the same size. Whereas if a rock is classified as poorly sorted, we're looking at a mix of sizes within the rock that we are identifying. So for well sorted, we'd be looking at something like this again, all sand sized grains, all the same size. Or this rock, all silt and clay, or what we're classifying as mud, making up the rock, nothing larger than that. Even if the sand varies a little bit, you can see some larger sand grains in here, maybe starting to scoot into the gravel range, we can see that the <clears throat> rock is dominated by sand-sized grains still considered well sorted. Whereas if we look at a rock with poor sorting, or what would be classified as poorly sorted, 
We can see right away there are large gravels within the rock. Between that there are sand sized grains that the naked eye can easily see, might not show up so well on the video. And then that sort of background base color of the light brownish tan between the grains is the mud. So poorly sorting, we're looking at a mix of sizes within our rocks. Whereas well sorted, again, we are looking at just one size throughout the rock as a whole. The third category we have to identify with clastic sedimentary rocks is the roundness. Now this is not looking at the rock as a whole, we are looking at the individual grains or clasts to determine how round they are. So you can't do this with silt and clay because they're too small to see. So when we talk about roundness, the rock must contain at least sand sized grains, if not gravel grains. When we look at roundness, we have three identifiers that we are going to use. The first is well-rounded, and these are nearly perfect spherical grains. The second category is sub-rounded, which we're going to call potato-shaped. Uh, they have curvature to the grains, and they're smooth, but they are not perfect spheres. And the third category for roundness is angular. Here we're looking at grains that are sharp and jagged. They have no real curvature or smoothness to them. So for well-rounded grains, I'm going to hold up this figure. Uh, you typically will only see well-rounded in the sand size category. So if I were to hold up again this rock and we were to zoom in, even with our magnifying glass on the video, it's not going to show up too well. But what you're seeing are very well-rounded grains. So if you can make out any of those in the video, they are well-rounded. They are nearly perfectly sphere-shaped. When we're looking at sub-rounded, again, we're talking about things that have curvature to them, but are more potato or non-perfectly spherical shapes. We bring the big rock back in. Here you can see nice smooth curvature to the gravels, but they're not perfect spheres. So because of that curvature, now we look at them as slightly rounded, what we're calling sub-rounded, but because they're not perfect spheres, uh, sub-rounded is the best categorization that they get. Our last roundness again is angular, and here we're looking at very jagged, sharp class within the rock. So I'll pick one that has gravels again so it'll be easier for you to see. When we look at the individual grains we can see sharp angles. When you run your finger there's sharp corners where the angle changes, uh, the faces change between the angles on the class. So we're looking at very jagged sharp uh, grains within our rock. Even if it's not really projecting out from the rock, like these ones are sticking out, you can get your fingers around them. We can still see very sharp angles in the grain as we look at it around the rock. These are the properties that we will use to identify clastic sedimentary rocks.